Hello and welcome to The Wargamer and you're joining me for another painting tutorial and this time I'm turning my attention to the fantasy sports game which is of course Blood Bowl and I'll be showing you how to paint the human team in the colours of the Reichland Reavers. So here we have the human thrower that we're painting as part of this tutorial and as you can see I've already primed it and I've used the Army Painters Uniform Grey Spray Primer to do so because I find that grey works really nicely on these light miniatures especially because it means you can add some of the light colours without having to add layer and layer just to get a nice and even coverage. Now the first task in painting this miniature is to paint the trousers and also the jersey as well and we want to get a nice canvasy feel. So we're we'll starting off with a base coat of Rakar Flash followed by a light wash of Seraphim Sepia. Next we'll be applying a highlight of a Shamti Bone before finally a very fine highlight of White Scar. Now when applying the base coat for the Rakar Flash I would recommend thinning the paint down slightly using about one part water to one part Rakar Flash and even though it's a base paint it should cover really nicely even with a little bit of water in there as well so what I'll be doing is once this is finished this first coat is finished and dried I'll be applying a second coat over the top and that will give me the best coverage possible that we can build on in future steps. With the Rakar Flesh base completed the next step is to perform a wash of Seraphim Sepia and I've mixed in roughly one part water to one part Seraphim Sepia here just to make a very subtle wash and as you can see when I apply it over the cloth here it'll pull into the recesses and only very slightly affect the colour, you can just see a subtle change across the surface but it's mainly going to be pulling in the recesses and really bringing out these details that we've got here. So following the Seraphim CPU wash the next step is to perform a highlight of a Shabti Bone and again I've mixed in some water here so roughly uh, two parts of Shabti Bone to one part water and we're just going to be using this mixture to pick out the raised sections of cloth like so, just very very subtle highlights using a thin brush just to drag the brush along those lines and really enhance the detail that we've got in the cloth here and especially around the any edges or folds that we've got across the miniature. Now the final step in painting the fabric is to apply a very fine highlight of white scar and I've mixed in one part Lamia medium to one part light white scar here. This is just to thin down the mixture so when we apply it over the surface as a, an extreme highlight it won't be too stark, it won't stand out too much from the colours we've applied in the previous step. So this time I'm just going to be focusing on some of the more pronounced folds in the, the actual uh, cloth there, especially around the torso here where you can imagine the light hitting and reflecting off and we just want to apply very very fine highlights of white scar just to lighten up the fabric slightly. The next step in painting our throw is to paint the skin on the arms and also in the face if you can reach in there as well. We're starting off with a base coat of Bugman's Glow followed by a highlight of Cadian Flesh Stone mixed with a small amount of Lamia Medium and then finally we'll be highlighting with Kisla Flesh. Once we've done all that we'll then be washing over the surface using Reichland Flesh Shade. As with the Rakar Flesh base coat, the first layer of Bugman's Glow should ideally be mixed with some water. I've mixed in roughly one part Bugman's Glow to one part water here. And then this will give you better control over the paint as you apply it on the miniature. And also once you've allowed the step to dry and also and then apply the second one, it will give you a really nice and even coverage in which to build up from. So following the base coat of Bugman's Glow, we've got this nice tanned flesh look. And once we bring up the colour of that really, we want to lighten it up. So I've got my Cadian Flesh Stone here and I've mixed in one part Lamy Medium to one part Cadian Flesh Stone. And this is so that when I start picking out some of these defined muscles in the arm, it won't be quite a stark transition between the darker Bugman's Glow and the lighter Cadian Flesh Stone. It'll be a much more smoother, more realistic transition. So you can see here I'm just picking out these muscle sections like so. Again leaving the dark Acadian flesh to the Bugman's Glow, sorry, visible in the recesses. Same when you come to pick out the fingers, pick out the tips and leave the darker flesh visible around the glove. As you can see, the less Cadian Flesh Tone highlight has really brought out some of the muscle definition in the arms. We're going to further this as well now. We're going to use some Kislev Flesh and this time we're just going to be applying some small lines just around these upper sections. You can see here it's a very slightly lighter tone. We're going to be using these to pick out some of the, the muscle definition on the arms and also around the fingers as well. If you just want to just pick out the fingertips and then a little bit further down just the knuckles as well. Let's just really enhance the detailing on the skin. Now the final step in painting the flesh is to wash over with a watered down solution of Reichland Flesh Shade. And I've mixed in uh, just one part Lamia Medium with the Reichland Flesh Shade here. I'll be applying this across the entirety of the surface. And because we've watered it down it won't affect the actual tone of the skin too much. But it'll pull into the recesses and also help to blend in the different layers that we've applied in the previous steps. Again just make sure you don't wash over onto any of the areas we've already painted such as the cloth. And make sure you really kind of 
evenly applied across the skin surfaces. With the skin completed, the next step in painting this miniature is to paint the harness that we've got around the chest here. We'll be painting this first of all with Celestra Grey, followed by a glaze of Gilliman Blue before finally highlighting with Baharov Blue. So we'll be starting off by painting the harness here with the Celestra Grey, and when we apply the next glaze, this will actually create a really nice pale blue colour as you'll see shortly. Now for this step, I've just mixed in a small amount of water, roughly one part water to one part, Celestia Grey, and this will give me a really nice and even coverage over the surface, and it should cover really nicely, especially over the grey base coat that I've got here. With the base coat of Celestia Grey completed, the next step is to wash over the surface using a very thin layer of Gilliman Blue. Now I've mixed in some Lamium Medium here, roughly one part Lamium Medium to one part Gilliman Blue, and as you can see here, when I apply it over the surface, it creates this really nice pale blue colour. It also pulls slightly into the recesses as well and gives us a slightly darker blue around the edges. You want to do this across all of the areas of Celestia Grey we painted in the previous step. So as you can see, the Gilman Blue has created this nice pale blue colouring and I've applied it a little bit more heavily towards the bottom to create this nice gradient going from the darker blue to the lighter blue at the top. So I'm going to be enhancing this somewhat using Blue Horror. I'm just going to be very carefully picking out some of these top sections, just highlighting the edges very, very gently with the Blue Horror just to enhance the lightness and also under the arm here as you can see I've already done and then under the other arm as well. The next step in painting this miniature is to paint some of the black straps which includes the belt, the straps behind the knee pads there and also some of the lining on the boots as well. I'll be starting off with a base coat of a bad and black followed by a highlight of Mechanica Standard Grey. I would recommend using a thin brush for this stage, you don't want to overspill onto the areas you've already painted with the black. And mix in some water as well just to make it easy to control the brush. I'm just very carefully picking out the straps just behind the knee and I'll be doing the same around the waist on the belt there and also on these sections here of the boots. You can see just the trim and also the soles at the bottom as well. Following the completion of the base coat, the next step is to highlight the edges of the, the straps here and just be very carefully picking out the top edges like so, very thin lines of Mechanica Standard Grey just to enhance the detailing of the straps like so. So with the black leather areas completed, the next step is to start painting some of the brown leather areas. And this includes the straps along the chest armour there, also the wrap around the hand. I'll also be painting the ball as well if your miniature is carrying any or if you want to uh, use these same techniques to paint any of the loose balls that you get in the set. And we're starting off with a base coat of Rhinoxide followed by a highlight of a Doom Ball Brown, before finally a final highlight of Scrag Brown. The Rhinox High base coat will be the same story as the other base coats we've applied. I've mixed in one part water to one part Rhinox High, and I'll be applying two thin coats over these surfaces, as opposed to one thick one. This gives the best coverage possible. So you can see here I'm just painting the ball there. And it's a, already a quite a nice coverage because it's a base paint, but then applying the second level layer will give us a really nice and even surface. So applying the Doom Ball Brown is probably a two-stage approach, especially on this miniature where we actually have a ball as part of the miniature. So if you're painting the ball, you want to mix in roughly one part Lamium Medium to one part Doom Ball Brown. And we're applying this over the surface here. And the reason why we've done this is we want it to be quite a subtle blend between the two colours. You can see that it's not too harsh, it's quite nice. And we're applying this mainly over the top section of the ball here, as you can imagine the light coming down, but we'll also be doing it towards the bottom as well, just a small amount, and then as we get close to the hand, we'll be leaving it out there. Now when we actually come to paint the other areas, such as the straps, what we want to do instead is to use a just a small amount of water mixed in with the Doomwell Brown, not Lamium Medium this time, and we're going to be using this mixture just to edge highlight these leather straps and just bring out the detail like so. The final step in painting the leather areas is to perform an extreme highlight of Scrag Brown. So along the ball here, I'm just going to be picking out the seam like so. But I'll be focusing more towards the top of the ball, as you can imagine where the light will be coming from, if it's coming from above. And then same principle when it comes to painting the rest of the straps as well. We'll just be very, applying very small amounts of the highlight this time, not quite as much as we did with the Doom Ball Brown, just a small amount, especially along the tops here, along the wrist like so. The next two sections I'll be focusing on are interchangeable. Now these will be the red and the green areas of the miniature. Now you can pretty much anywhere that I paint red or green, you could mix the colors up. You don't have to follow the exact areas that I follow on this particular miniature. It really is up to you. Now we're painting the green areas first of all. Now we're starting off with a base coat of Caliban Green, followed by a layer of Warpstone Glow, before finally highlighting with Moot Green. 
The Caliban Green base coat will provide a really nice dark green base layer that we can build up from and again mix in some water here with this base coat just to improve the flow and also give you a better finish overall. Now the areas I'm painting green on this particular miniature will be the towel, the gloves and also the boots as well. With the base coat completed, the next step is start bringing up the colors slightly with some layers of warpstone glow. And I've mixed in some Lamia Medium here again, uh, roughly one part Lamia Medium to warpstone glow. And I'll be using this watered down diluted mix here, just to pick out these folds, especially in the towel here, you can see how it works. It's not quite as strong as, I've, if, as if I had applied out the pot. It creates a much more subtle blend between the lighter and darker colors. And I'm leaving the Caliban Green visible in the recesses still. I'll be applying this across the rest of the miniature in the same way. The final step in painting the green areas of the miniature is to apply a very thin line of moot green and this time I'll be focusing on the folds again but just on, along the actual ridges and applying a very thin line. Mixing in a small amount of water making a mixture of roughly one pot moot green to one pot water will greatly assist in doing this. I'm just going to be picking out all the folds across the miniature. With the green areas of the miniature completed, the next step is start painting the red sections. This includes the lace on the front there and also the sections around the knee pads as well. We're starting off with a base coat of Mephiston Red, followed by a layer of Evil Sun Scarlet, before finally highlighting with Wild Rider Red. As Mephiston Red is a base paint, it should cover really nicely over the grey primer that we've got here. Just be very careful not to overspill onto the areas we've already painted, especially when you're painting around the light areas uh, such as the fabric here. And just use a thin brush or just a small amount of paint on the end there. And again, mixing in a small amount of water here will really help you control the flow of this paint. Following the base coat of Mephiston Red, the next step is to apply the Evil Sun Scarlet around the edges of the red areas that we painted last time. So, for example, just around the edges here. We're pretty much going to be adopting the same technique as we did for painting the green sections, albeit with different colours. I've mixed in just a small amount of Lamia Medium here just to make the blending a little bit more subtle between the darker and lighter reds. And again, you want to focus this particular step around the top sections of these uh, knee pads, for example. The same goes for when you're actually painting the laces. You just want to pick out the actual raised section of the laces as opposed to painting the entirety of them. Following the application of the Evil Sun Scarlet, the next step is to apply some Wazdaka Red. Now this time I'll just be focusing on some of the corners and applying this as an extreme highlight as opposed to uh, a, a more prominent one than we did in the last step. So this time I'm just focusing mainly around these corners on, on the top section of the knee pad. As you can see there, just creating a nice slightly orange glow to the edges. Again around the top. Same goes for laces as well. This time I'll just be focusing on the tips of the laces and then also a very fine line down the center of the laces across the chest as well. So the next step in painting our Blood Bowl thrower is to paint all the blue areas of the miniature. This includes the armor sections around the waist, the knee pads, the socks, the chest armor, the helmet. There's quite a few areas on this miniature we're painting in this step. Now we're starting off with a base coat of Calador Sky, followed by a wash of Drakenhof Nightshade before highlighting, first of all, with Teclas Blue, and then finally, Blue Horror. Now the reason why we've left the blue armor to one of the late steps in painting this miniature is because generally speaking it's easier to paint the miniature from the inside out. So we painted the cloth first and then we built up to the, the straps and then the, the knee pads and now finally we're actually painting the bits of the miniature which is the kind of the, the more external sections which is obviously this blue that we've got here. So I'm just applying the Calador Sky the same way I've done the previous base coats. Mixing in some water to thin the paint down to make it easy to work with and just be careful not to overspill onto the areas we've already painted. So following the base coat, the next step is to apply a wash of Drakenhof Nightshade over the surfaces here. And we want this to pool into the recesses and flow over the surfaces and it will give us a nice dark blue tone as you can see it's happening here. But when it pulls into the recesses, it really bring out some of the detail, some of the scratches it's already done in the shoulder pads there and really enhance the look of these areas. With the wash dried, the next step is to start highlighting the edges of the blue armor with techless blue. And again, just use a small amount on the tip of your brush here. We're just going to be very carefully picking out some of the edges along the armor, like so. And we're doing this across the entirety of the miniature, wherever we've painted the blue, and especially around the top here where we've got the helmet. So I'm just painting a very thin line, very carefully, mixing in a small amount of water with the paint as well, we're really helping controlling the brush and how you apply it on these highlights. 
Now the final step in painting the blue of the armor is to apply some very fine highlights of blue horror and this time we'll be focusing along some of the corner edges so for example here on the helmet like so just applying a small amount in this front corner and just blending it down into the rest like so and then anywhere else where we've got corners so for example the corner of the helmet here of the shoulder pad sorry and then also these scuffs that we've got in the shoulder pad as well. With the blue armor completed, the next step is to start painting the white areas of the miniature. This includes the stripe on the helmet and some various stripes along the miniature as well. We'll be starting off with a base coat of Ulthran Grey, followed by a highlight of White Scar. So to begin with, we'll be so to begin with, we'll be base coating with Ulthran Grey, and I've mixed in some water in with this mix. Now, if you're using a grey base coat like me, you shouldn't need to apply a um, anything like Celestra Grey beneath this, you should be able to apply this straight over the top. But just mix in some water with this mix and apply two thin layers and this will give you a really nice, strong Ultron Grey base coat to work from. Now the same technique that I'm using here can also be used to paint some of the freehand stripes on the miniature. This includes some areas around the, the socks there and some various uh, stripes along the shoulder pads and other areas as well. I'll be doing this the same way, so I'll be starting off with just a small amount of Ultron Grey. Again, mixing in water will really help with this. And what you want to do is you just want to pick a spot on the miniature that you want to have a stripe and then just apply a very thin line first of all, like so, and then apply a second thin line so that you've got these two parallel lines like so, and then you can just fill in the area in between. So following the application of Ultron Grey, I've now got some white scar, and this time I'll be using it to highlight over the areas we've already painted. So for example, the stripe on the helmet here, I'm just going to be picking out along the edges mainly of the actual highlight. The Ultron Grey itself is actually still quite light, so it doesn't need to be completely covered with the white to get the effect. It actually creates a nice dirty grey colour, actually. And the same goes for the, the rest of the stripes that I've applied. You can see I've, uh, I've done a couple of them dotted about the miniature. Again, you can just go over just one section of them with the white scar here, which you can see I'm just doing like so. With the matte areas of the miniature completed, the next step is to start painting some of the metallic areas. And first of all, we're starting off with the silver metallic areas. This includes the uh, the spikes around the wrist there, and also any spikes across the miniature, or even any blades that are protruding from uh, some of the other players as well. We're starting off with a base coat of lead belcher, followed by a wash of non-oil, before finally highlighting with the Stormhost silver. So I'm just going to be applying the base coat of Lead Belcher over these areas, as you can see I'm doing here. Again, mixing in water will really help in applying this base coat. As you can see, I'm just being careful not to overspill onto the non-metallic areas, as it's notoriously difficult to paint over metallic paints once you've overspilled. So just be very, very careful, and the mixing in of water will really help control where this paint is being applied. With the base coat completed, the next step is to wash over these lead belcher areas with normal oil. This will pull into the recess, especially around the bottom of the spikes there. And it'll really darken the metal color as well. Add a little bit of wear and tear to it. Look like it's it's greasy or it's dirty or grimy. It's not super polished, which is what the effect we don't really want to go for on these miniatures. We want them to look battered and abused. We don't want the metal to look too pristine. The final step in painting the metallic areas is to paint the very tips with the Stormhost Silver, and if we just focus on the very tips of these spikes like so, it'll really give the impression of sharpness on the spike. You can see that it's a lot lighter at the top than it is at the bottom as well. And same goes for anywhere else. We can just pick out the edges instead. So around this hand brace, I'm just very carefully running my brush along the edge like so. Now you may notice in the previous step, I also picked out the uh, the rivets and various uh, bolts that are hang holding all this armor together. And you don't have to do this yourself. It's entirely optional, but personally, I, uh, I think that adding these silver details really enhances the detailing on this armor. So the next step in painting this miniature is to paint all the gold details. And this particular miniature, this means the, the, the rim around the spike there, the actual grille on the helmet, the wings, and also this uh, shoulder panel as well. And we're starting off with a base coat of Retributor armor, followed by a wash of Seraphim Sepia, before finally highlighting with Stormhost Silver. So with the Retributor armor, I'll be painting over the entirety of these remaining areas you can see I'm doing here, just being careful not to overspill. Now Retributor Armour is an excellent gold paint, it's got a very high pigmentation level so it'll cover really nicely over these grey areas and gives a really nice bright gold base in which to build up from. 
With the base coat of Retriptor armor completed, the next step is to just wash over the surface with the Seraphim Sepia. As you can see that I'm just doing here, making sure that it pulls into all of these recesses. It'll give the gold a nice burnished look, as you can see over the surface, and also pull into these recesses and really enhance some of the detailing, as you can see here. With the wash dry, the next step is to start highlighting over the gold areas with the Stormhost Silver. And you can see here, I'm being quite liberal with the application. I'm not worrying too much if it overspills because it'll just give the impression that the armor is scratched and damaged through wear and tear. And you can just about see, I'm still making sure that I keep the darker gold visible in the recesses. We don't want to lose the gold color entirely, but we want to give it a nice silvery sheen. So with the silver areas of the miniature completed, the miniature is pretty much done. However, there are a few optional extras you can add on to really add some detail to this miniature. And these are basically adding in uh, dirt and grime and wear and tear on the armor. Now you may notice I've already applied the decals at this stage is because we want to apply the, uh, the damage over the top of those particular decals at this stage. Now we'll be using a number of different paints for a number of different techniques. So we'll be using Eschen Grey to apply some scuffs and scratches to the armor. We'll also be using some blood letter to uh, apply some blood splatters to the miniature and then also Agrax Urshay to wash over and create the buildup of dirt and grime on the armor. Now the reason I'm using Eschen Grey for these scuffs and scratches is because it's not quite as harsh as uh, a bad and black, but it'll still create some nice scratch marks. I'm focusing around the edges, basically anywhere you would imagine uh, damage to occur, and I'm actually uh, positioning the brush perpendicular to the edge, and then just flicking upwards. Let's create some very subtle scratches. Now you want to build up these over a few layers rather than just applying uh, lots of paint straight off the bat, and this will just create much more realistic damage and scuffs to the armor. The next step is to use some blood letters to apply some blood stains to the cloth and also the armor as well. You don't want to go too heavy on this as it can um, draw attention away from the rest of the armor. So I'm just going to put a few small splatters just on the front of the tunic here just to represent maybe where the player is charging to another player and got themselves a little bit bloody in the process. And you can scatter this across the miniature, especially if you've got a particular weapon or a spiked fist. You can uh, quite easily apply these over the top and create some really nice details on the actual armor itself. Next, I'll be applying some Agrax Earthshade over the armor. This will represent uh, mud and dirt, which is accumulated on the armor. And it's gonna be focusing this especially around some of these areas, such as the rivets. Basically, any gaps you see in the armor. I'm gonna focus it mainly on the armor because I can imagine the cloth being probably washed more often than the armor is, actually. And this will just really add some wear and tear to this armor that we've got going on here. It's really create some nice backstory to the, the these players and how brutal the sport of Blood Bowl is. And here we have the completed Reichland Reaver, who you can see I've also based. Now I'll be explaining how to do this in a future tutorial. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more Blood Bowl content in the future, please do let me know in the comments below. For some sneak peeks at the projects I'm currently working on, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook, which you can find links to in the description below. And if you want to be kept up to date with all of my latest videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now these tutorials take many hours to produce and you can help me in making more tutorials by checking out my Patreon page. From there you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which just really help me in producing future content. You can check out my Patreon page by clicking on the link on the screen now or in the description below. And finally, if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out my previous Games Workshop painting tutorials. So until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.